Are we ready? Yeah. We're recording, so we have to be ready. It's recording? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's what you're going to get. Types. What is types? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> What's that? Is that the. Uh... No, what, what I did is I put all the Masechta, uh, Mishnah, Gemara checklist. Yeah. And the structure. I started the structure. <laughs> Now, what I'll need help as you go along is to understand how you put together the checklist in the structure. The checklist in the structure. This is what I'm talking about. Can I scan it? Could I scan it? I could scan it. If you want to scan it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to scan it. Anyway, I'll let's begin. 837. Um, okay. The name? What is that? Do the name? Who? The name. I'll do the name afterwards. Oh, you see? I will not clear. Got it. Uh, Tamar Bat Miriam. Who? Tamar Bat Miriam. Tamar Bat Miriam? Yeah. Okay, I want to dedicate the Shia, at least it should go for me as the Shema, of Tamar Bas Miriam. The Shema should have an Aliyah, Tamar, and it should be a tremendous quest for her. It's a Limit at her, and it's a Limit, uh, it's, it's a Limit even how to Limit, you know, and so on. It should be a quest for the Shema, and Tamar. I want to say the the uh, of the Shia should be a schus for her in Ghanaian and provide her with tremendous alias neshama of Tamar Bas Miriam. Miriam. Okay, that's it. <coughs> and now the motion takes over from here. You know. Okay, so we've done uh, some nice work last time. Let's just uh, review because the some of the, you know some of the, just the major ideas you know. Um, if you remember what I said last time, <clears throat> that there are two operations of the mind. It's very important to remember this. These are, these are you say this that you have to really have on the tip of your tongue, so to speak, you know. There are two fundamental operations of the mind. One is to analyze. Anything. Analysis means to break down into its components or its parts or its categories. Okay? And synthesis is the ability to do what? To put it together. Actually, it's not so much putting it together, it's how this connects with everything else. It's the understanding of relationships. How does this idea connect with everything else? What's interesting about all this is that in any given, for any, any idea ever presented, there's only two things you need to know about that idea, and that constitutes its full understanding, which is interesting. The first concept is called, okay, you need to know what is it? What is this thing that I'm looking at or thinking about? That's the concept of a definition. A definition is a statement that reveals or describes <coughs> the true nature of something. Not easy to define something. Yet it's the most fundamental thing to look for immediately when somebody presents a concept to you. What is it? Give me its definition. That is one of the most difficult things for people to do, which is interesting, as we, we will see. You know. The second thing, um, uh, w w in terms of its definition, uh, is to what does it belong? What's its class? Where does it belong? How does it connect with everything else? Those two fundamental ideas gives you a handle on what this thing is, it, what, what the thing is. What is it? Its definition. And then, to what does it belong? Its class, or its category, or eventually its structure. <laughs> Are you fine? Have you had solo? You had solo? Yeah. Good. If somebody faints, we can always use your services. It never happens. Yes. <laughs> so that's analyzed slash synthesis. Okay, we get six guys. That's good. Even. What is it? Is so those are very important synthesis. ideas. The concept of analysis and synthesis as the two fundamental <coughs> operations of the mind. And the second thing is that any given idea needs to have only two ideas, and that will tell you everything. One is what is it? That's analysis, because analysis reveals what it is. And the second idea is synthesis. To what does it belong? Okay? To what does it connect to or relate? That's it. It's amazing how simple things are 
Of course, they're not simple, because just to figure that out is a tremendous uh, avoidance so on. Now, each of these things, of course, has many ideas behind them. You know, analysis, the first thing you want to analyze is what? Is its definition. What is it? Then the second thing you want to analyze is what's called the safchonas. It's categories. You know, there are many things. Every idea has categories or attributes, fancy language attributes. Uh, for instance, this table. If I asked you, what is a table? I say, okay, um, I want to buy a table. You come and you say, what's a table? You know what I'm saying? So how would you define a table? How do you define a table? What is a table? I mean, we all know what it is because as soon as we see it. But that's a long way off from actually describing it to somebody who's never seen it. So well, how, would you, how would you define a table? What do you guys say? piece of furniture, which is this. Now, when you said a piece of furniture, what were you really saying? Yeah. What were you really doing? Were you analyzing it? First or were you synthesizing it? Up for trouble. What? First, I was setting myself up for trouble. No, 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 no. In this class, there is no such thing as trouble. There's only learning. Very important idea. Now, so, uh, it, so when you said class, it's a piece of furniture, furniture you said class. See, you immediately went to class, right? That's good. <coughs> no. now, that said, now, not specific, you want to now analyze it. What is it? A piece of furniture which protrudes off of the ground and stands in the protrudes center. Protrudes off the ground? Not protrudes, bad word, sorry. Um, um, is extended higher than the ground. Stands on the ground. And stands on the ground and is used to place objects primarily. That's not bad. It doesn't not have to bad. stand on the ground. I, would, I, would I don't know if I would say it stands on the ground. Yeah. Nice of it, you know? You've never words, seen a table suspended from the ceiling. No, it could be from a it's wall. An like this. That's okay. It's suspended what? from the surface. It's suspended from the surface? Like, what does that mean? Suspended means that. What do you mean from the surface? An, I know, an object elevated from the common ground used to play, used as a elevated, <clears throat> as, as, a, as a means to, to um, what the words? Place, place objects. To place objects or to um, to um, do certain activities at uh, waste levels. Waste levels? Oh, you mean at the waste level? Waste level. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought it how big your waste is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I tell you. Yeah. Um, okay, not bad. I, I would be a little different. I wouldn't say, because, you, you know, when you say furniture, it's synthesis. When you're doing now what you're doing, it's analysis. But what I would have said, because that's a really a very important feature, a table is what? Is a, is a surface that is horizontal, and therefore it enables you to place objects upon. You see, you have, you have to say it's, it's a surface that's horizontal, and therefore you can place objects on it. It's elevated also. What? It's also elevated. It's not Does it have to be elevated or not? Is that essential? A table? Yeah. Okay. We we'll throw that into the mix. Yeah. You know, so it's an elevated surface that is horizontal, and therefore enables one to place objects upon. Now, then you'd have to say, okay, that's a table, but you have to make hafchonis, or what's called differentia. You know, when you look at an object, you, you, know, you say, well, what is it, <coughs> right? So you look for its definition. But remember, every definition has two things in it. What is it, and what is it not? You don't say what it's not, then it resembles a lot of stuff, you see. So in any, good, in, any, in any good definition, you'll always have what is the thing and what is it not. That's just analysis. What purpose it serves? You always, you always throw well, it in. Well, purpose is part, purpose is, well, purpose is in many ways relative. You know, um, you know like you, if you have a bank account, the purpose for you is to be able to put money in. The purpose for a thief is to be able to take money out. So, you know, that's a relative term, you know. But the main idea is that you have a definition, you have what it's not, then you have its components, and then you have what it's belong. You see, that's thinking. So would components be in the category? It's honest, it's categories. Like desk, like this table. Yeah. The table has a shape, it has size, it has a material, it has density, it has okay. color, you see. So that's components. Those are havchonas or components or attributes. An attribute is some is a property. So, uh, somebody has a, a, a property is something 
which something has, a quality or property or an attribute. So that's thinking, which is very important, because you can apply that to, you can apply that that ideas to anything, you know. I just want to mention something which I had mentioned, which is very important. The the true concept of thinking means you must think within a checklist. <coughs> within a? a checklist. Most people don't do that. Very important, right? So you need to know, well, what do I want to think about an object? Most people don't do that. They have no checklist at all. And that's a tremendous mistake. That's for the analysis part? The checklist? That's analysis and, and synthesis. synthesis. And synthesis. You know, it's a checklist is what enables you to really know what to think about. Without that, it would be random. It would be chance. You know, you may hit it, you may <clears> not hit it. See, most people don't have a concept of a checklist. I get the example. I'm a pilot. You're walking to the plane. Then you hear one pilot say to the other guy, right? What do you think we should check? There's a 400 buttons up there, right? What do you think we should check? So you think guy's out of his mind, right? You walk right off the plane. What do, mean, what do we think we should check? What is that supposed to mean, right? All right, so how does a guy, so how does a pilot make sure he doesn't miss anything? And the answer is, he has a checklist. He checks off. He's not going to leave it up to muzzle, luck. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. Anything you do, you need to have a checklist. Whether you want to call a checklist a plan, which it really is, Fine, but in the end, you have to know what you want to know. Very important idea. Okay? Second thing, another thing, I'm just randomly going over some of the important ideas. The second thing is structure. There are two kinds of, when you talk about a relationship, you know, there are two things you really can say. Okay, to what class does it belong? And is it part of a structure? <clears throat> A class, for instance, you know, a guy rides, uh, he's come, comes, he's riding a motorcycle. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, first of all, what is a motorcycle? You know, you want to try to define it. It's a two-wheeled vehicle. You know what I'm saying? That has usually has an engine that powers it, right? I'd say that would be a motorcycle, you know? But what to, to what class does it belong? Vehicle. What is a motorcycle? What? Vehicle. It's a vehicle, yeah, yeah, it's a good vehicle, but what it really is, usually it's a motor vehicle. That's why they call it the Motor Vehicle Bureau. Or method of transportation. Well, then we'd ask, okay, then what's the purpose of a vehicle? A vehicle is an object that transports, <coughs> right, a person from point A to B, or any object from point A to B. It's a method of transport, you know what I'm saying? And so on. But if I want to know its class, I say, well, the, this motorcycle is part of what? It's part of a uh, motor vehicles. You know what I'm saying? That's what I would say. You know, that's its class. Okay. In any case, so that's one way of relating something. What's its class? Another way, which is even more important, is called its structure. A structure. That's where the Ramchal really goes to town when he talks about structure. What is a structure, really? What is a structure? What's a classic structure? The human body is a structure. The human body is a system. But you know, what's a, what's a, this building is a structure. You know what I'm saying? A what's a structure? Human, really? stru human heart is a structure. Human heart is a, well, yeah, human heart is a structure. That's right. It's also part of a system, but it's, it's a part structure. Part of a system, but as it's for itself. Yeah, it's yes. A what, so what's a structure, really? Many things belonging to one thing. Well, it's, it's yes, it, many... Parts components. or components, yeah. right? Belonging to one thing. To one component. To... What does that mean? Serving one purpose. That serves one purpose. Okay. So in a certain sense, they're all integrated, that they achieve a common purpose. You know what I'm saying? Amongst all of them. It doesn't have to be. It's just relationship, whatever they are. Oh, that's what I'm getting at. But really what it is, it's components that have a certain... A, a structure is an arrangement of objects or components, right? that relate to each other in a, for a common purpose, you see. So that would be a structure. So this structure, which is a building, right, what's the purpose, what's all the components of this building, you know, it's what? It's, it's walls, <clears throat> it's ceiling, it's floor, you know what I'm saying? It's beams, you know? They all relate to each other, right? What's the relationship that's expressed by this particular building? 
the purpose of the building. Well, what is a what does a building do really? The shelter. Shelter. No, shelter is a purpose. You're right, specifically, it is a shelter. Mm-hmm. But maybe it's, <coughs> maybe it's a maybe it's a, a maybe it's a storage facility. I don't know if I'd call it shelter. You know, it's like keep a car, a garage. Is a garage a shelter? It's a, sh- it's a shelter in a way. Mm-hmm. In a way. Type. Yeah. Partitions a space. <clears throat> what? It defines a certain space, so partitions. Oh, a yes. A <clears throat> building, its function is to do what? Is to create a space that can be used. You know what I'm saying? For whatever purpose. Shelter is one purpose. You know what I'm saying? So a building, what a building does, it creates a space, an enclosed space, and as a result of that, you can use it for use for things that you need to. So therefore, you have a lot of stuff that goes into a building. You see? Okay. So these are certain very important ideas about thinking in general. But this is called thinking in general. Let's call it logic. You know, logic is the science of correct thinking. That's what its definition is, you know? It's how you think correctly, as opposed to thinking incorrectly, and so on, you know? Is that a component of common sense? What was that? Is that a component of common sense? Yes, we all hold... Common sense simply means sense which is common. Makes sense. You know, and that's common to everybody, you know? But logic is much more sophisticated than common sense. So what, what, is, what is of what? Is common sense of logic or logic of common sense? Um, I would say common sense is logic which is shared among everybody in a certain sense. You know, everybody has a certain logic, you know, and it's common, which means it's this, in other words, the ability to think is a shared skill. Many people, you know, many people can do it and so on, you know. But how sophisticated is the sense? One day you brought, That's different. One day you brought a metaphor, I'm a true professional. What was okay. that? One day you brought you you brought a metaphor, amateur professional, so that how much professional versus amateur. Oh yeah, yeah, well, the, yeah. The, the describe it very well. Yeah. yeah, for instance, if let's say you have a good voice, you know, so if you have a good voice, um, and you don't train it, okay, it's good, but if you train it, you become much better. So logic, in a certain way, is common sense honed, you know, in it to a much greater degree of sophistication, you know. You find many Chazal were into logic, you know, Ramchal wrote a whole book on logic, Derek Tvunen, Derek Sefi Goin. Also the Rambam wrote Miles Higoin, the Rambam, he wrote a book on logic. The uh, Malbim wrote a whole book on logic, and so on. Chazal were very aware of thinking as a study in and of itself. Excuse me, but you wouldn't say that a voice is common sense, though. No. No voice, no, no, I'm just, in the area of thinking, right. there's common sense. Right. I'm just giving an example that a guy can have common sense, but if he trains it, <coughs> then becomes much greater in his ability to use it and to arrive there for yeah, the but truth. Then it's not called common sense anymore, it goes into another plateau. Yeah, well, then, well it's not, yeah, it's not common sense, right. yes, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so anyway, so these are the ideas Basically, that we would like to apply. Logic. Logic, yeah. There's another aspect. I mean, when you, when you enter, so much to talk about. When you enter any chokhmah, you know. You need to ask yourself, there, there are certain things going on. If you really want to master the Chochmah, to do it right, right? So you have to ask yourself, one, what are the skills involved in mastering the Chochmah? The skills. The second thing is, what is the information of this Chochmah? The third thing is, to what do I, how do I apply this Chochmah to the real world? You see what I'm saying? If you want to really do a good job, really walk away knowing well. So you're going to ask yourself, again, what are the skills involved? Not knowledge, but skills. The ability to to do something. The second thing is, again, what's the information that I need to know in this Chochmah? And the third thing is the application of this Chochmah to the real situation, to real life, you know, and so on, you know. 
what are the skills involved in learning Torah? Interesting question. You know. Well, the first skill is what? What are the skills involved in learning? It's very useful because you realize that one of the reasons why many people never make it in learning, or they make it poorly, because they never really master the skills that you need even to get into the Chochmah. Uh, reading, reading, I think, is the first thing. Yes. What's that? Well, reading is part of what? Go up. Give me... The, no, no, no. <laughs> reading is a skill. But <laughs> reading is part of what? Go up. Remember now, you, you know... The, Structure. Who? Structure. Go up means... Well, what I mean is that, you know, there, there's specific, you're specific. Yeah. reading is specific. Generally. I want the, the, the category that reading fits in. No. Skill. 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 Information of Reading is a skill. No. No. Um, no. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because the, the rule is try to become as general as possible. Because if you do, you go up, and that embraces many more ideas, and automatically you see the relationships between many ideas, not just to the specific. Absorbing information. No, reading is a skill, it's a specific skill, but it's a skill that's part of a larger area. What is that area called? Absorbing, getting information. No. Speech. Speech. <clears throat> not really. Yeah. Although, no, it's not, it's not the answer, but... Interesting. What is reading part of? Communication. How do we communicate? What do we use? Language. language. There you are. It's part of language. Language has many skills involved. There's reading, comprehension. There's pronunciation. Yes. And therefore reading. You have to know how to pronounce. Then you have to know how to read. Then you have to know how to translate. Right? Then you have to know how to speak. Each one is a separate skill, but it's all part of the language skills. You know? <coughs> so what I would say is if a guy's gonna learn Torah, what does he have to, what language does he have to know? Hebrew. Hebrew. Aramaic. Great. How many guys know Hebrew? Two Aramaic. Really? How many guys know Hebrew, really? Yeah, you ever notice an Israeli sit down to learn? These guys are, as far as I can see, these guys are much better than everybody else, because they know the language. It's a real language for them. Everybody else is struggling just to understand it, you know? So language is a critical skill that nobody really learns, you know? Remember the old days when you learned Dig Duk? Shemalti, Shemalto, Shemalt, Shomal, Shomro, Shomal, Shemaltem. I hated Dig Duk and everybody else, I think. Why? That's the wrong way to teach Dig Duk. It's the wrong way to teach language. But at least they felt that you had to know it. Do they teach Dig Dug today in, in elementary school? Yes, they do. They do? Yeah, in the girls. Who? Cool. The girls. Dig Dug. <laughs> How could you learn a foreign, a safe way, a foreign language? Yeah. You don't even know the language. What is that supposed to mean even? Right? Okay. So you need to learn language, which includes Hebrew. Right? How many types of Hebrew are there? There's four. There's Biblical Hebrew. Shnei. Medieval, modern. Hebrew went through four stages. Okay, now, at, at least, you know, if you're going to learn, you should know Biblical and, and, and Mishnah, because you're going to learn that and so on, you know? So you just have to know Hebrew. What else do you have to know if you really want to become a, really learn, learn well? Aramaic. You need to know Aramaic. You have to know Aramaic. It's funny, you know? But the Gemara is only, you know, is a one-third Hebrew, two-thirds Aramaic. Which Aramaic is it? I mean, how many Aramaics are there? There's two. Well, actually, it could be more, but there's Babylonian Aramaic, which is the Aramaic of Bavli. And then there's Palestinian <coughs> or Syrian Aramaic, it's called, uh, which is the uh, Uncle's Yishami. Is there Old French in it as well? Old French? French, yeah. In Aramaic? Not in Aramaic. In Rashi. No. In Rashi. Yeah, yeah. Well, Rashi was translating. You know, <coughs> you know, it's not, it's not yeah, language. It's English. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, how many guys know, how many guys know Hebrew? Right. Dig Dug. Forget about, you know, the Aramaic and so on. But, I mean, language. What's the next skill you have to do? So you need the skill of language. If you want to really know, if you want to do it right and master, okay, that's the one. Then the second skill is what? It's thinking. Think successfully, you know. And thinking involves, actually, 
at least two skills. There's logic, and there's another chokhmah called ontology. Ontology is the study not of logic. Logic is the science <coughs> of thinking, correct, it's correct, correct science of thinking. Ontology is the study of being in general. What is a quality? What's a quantity? What's a cause? What's a condition? What are these things? And so on, you know? It, it analyzes uh, being in general, you know? And that gives you a tremendous edge because the Gemara is filled with ontological, that's an adverb, uh, adjective, ideas. Most people don't know, you know? They make, that's why they make so many mistakes. You know what I'm saying? A cause, an effect, what's a relationship, and so on. I'm not, look, don't get me wrong, I don't think I'll do this in yeshiva. I'll never do this in yeshiva, you know? But mm, these are the skills involved. So you have language, you have logic, ontology, and you have the third skill. Yeah, so you have one skill called language. The, th- the second skill is called thinking. 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 And under thinking you have logic, 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 ontology, and you have a third skill, which is very important to Gemara. Who? Who? Memory. Who? Storage. No, storage. No, 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 before you get to memory, Synthesizing, synthesizing. Who? Synthesizing. The no, no. What's the primary skill you need to have for Gemara, really? Nobody does this. I mean, this is like, forget it, you know? Patience. You should know one thing. This is a short course. <laughs> in, in how to really do it right. If there was ever yeshiva in the world that did this, and this is just part of it, Guys would come out incredible, you know. If they mastered the language, they knew how to think clearly, you know. They knew logic, they knew ontology, and so on, you know. Argumentation. Who? Argumentation. Yes, because you have it there. (laughs) Argumentation. (laughs) Argument. (laughs) Debate. The Gemara is filled with debate. The whole shock of a time is debate. Yet, does anybody know what debate is? It's a a separate subject. Who? It's a separate subject. It's a separate subject. Sure, argumentation. In thinking. Yeah. It's part of how do you debate? What does evidence mean? What support? What's a refutation? You know, what, what are these things? How do you prove a point? How do you refute a point? What are the false ideas of argument? False arguments? And so on. What is what? What's a false argument? False? Yeah, there are, many, there are many arguments which are false, and immediately they're called fallacies. You know, you see immediately, hey, that's not an argument, you know? Uh, and, and so on, you know? And a lot of people don't realize that, that there's a whole slew of things that are false. Because they don't know how to argue. They don't know what a successful argument is. And so on. So, but and Gamal's 95% of Gamal Shakra Vitalia. It's all debate. You see, okay. Nobody does that, and so on and so forth. And therefore, people have a very hard time following the flow. Or a certain a guy can say, yeah, it's a kasha. Maybe it's not a kasha, if you really think about it. Or if somebody answers a, you know, let's say somebody presents a problem and somebody refutes or presents an answer, and then there's a refutation of that answer. And you ask yourself, well, <clears throat> how do they refute it? I don't see the refutation. You know, because he's following the logic of the argument, and so on. What can I say? Nobody does this. But you can see how these are the skills involved in really mastering it. Because Gemara fundamentally is what? It's a debate book. It's a, really, a, Gemara is fundamentally a problem-solving <clears throat> format. That's what a sugya is. It presents a problem treats it, tries to resolve it, then you have the resolution. Anyway, these are certainly skills which would be nice to have. Fine. So, what do we have? We have certain ideas about thinking, we have certain ideas about... Uh, Language. Lang- well, the skills necessary, that would enormously help. Uh, you know, because a lot of people struggle with this. They struggle with language. They struggle with thinking. I mean, I, I, let me tell you something, you can't believe... The, 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 even though people are intelligent, but they, they, they have tremendous deficits in thinking, you know, I, whatever, and so on. Anyway, I'll tell you something, you never believe what goes on out there, you know. I mean, a lot of shurim and, and uh, the machanchem and guys who are in Kuala for years and so on, and you ask them different questions and they look at you, you know, like, what is, like, you know, I, they don't even have an answer. And then, but you should, you know. What? <laughs> What's that? 
Most likely should turn on. You're on the air. Well, I'm on the air, right? Oh, what can I say? No, no, it's unfortunate because they're not, they're not prepared. You know, it's not a skilled talk. What can I say? Okay, now, <clears throat> what are we doing? What we want to do is fundamentally take a skill called thinking and apply it to learning. Uh, apply it to learning. Okay. So, <clears throat> we want to apply it to Mishnayas. Okay. So there are three checklists that I, I'm going to give you now. Three checklists. I'm a perfectionist. I gotta warn you guys. You know, I try to be exact. Not always exact, but I try to be. Okay, it's part of the thinking and so on. You know, what I'm going to give you is three different checklists of what you have to look for, and then we're going to use that as we learn Shabbos. Masech the Shabbos. Okay. First checklist. Let's say we're starting Shabbos, right? So we want to get a handle on it, right? So the first idea that you want to know is what's the title of the Masechta? Simple. So that's a Masechta checklist. The yeah, this is, the, this is called the Masechta checklist. Then we're going to have the Mishnah checklist. And then we're going to have the Halacha checklist. Yes. And, and, and when you go through these ideas, then you really know. You, you, know, you understand exactly what you need to go, what, what you're after. Uh, and you get a tremendous clarity, cloak like. So, first checklist. Must the Mesechta. Oh, thank you. Oh. It needs to be fine. Start and caffeine free. I, I can't. I can't take fresco. <laughs> this is not diet, but it's caffeine free. It's diet? It's not caffeine free. Maybe it's. Is that diet? No. This is diet, but it's not caffeine free. Ah, okay, okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody have any questions until now? Uh, no. We're in full agreement. Yeah, the, the, check, the, the three checklists, if you don't mind, like well, when you when you then you're about to repeat them. Yeah. We do the same same terminology because. Say putting, again. By what? By putting them together, those three checklists, I I realize that it's always we're always looking at the same thing, meaning. Is one word identification, location, composition. They come back. They come back in those three checklists. Yeah, those are generic categories. Generic categories, right? So, if you could, if you don't mind, just bring saying those That's points in, uh, I am. in general. <laughs> yeah, Not right now. I am. I am. Thank you. Thanks. There are many more. For instance, there's a checklist of Judaism. There are four major areas of Judaism that fundamentally encompass the totality of Judaism. You guys want to know? You're interested in knowing? Interesting. To be able to encapsulate. You can encapsulate, which means encapsulate. Judaism. Summarize. What? Summarize. Yeah, so it's not summary. It's more to organize it. Mm-hmm. You can organize Judaism that has four major areas. It's interesting to look at Judaism that way, that you need to learn. Let's just throw it in, because it's interesting, you know. The first is called the plan. <coughs> what is the plan of the Bria? What is the plan? Okay. The plan is answer. The plan, it, it, it's the Hebrew equivalent is that Shkofa. What exactly is going on? Who is the Muslim? What does he want? Why does he want it? What did he create, really? Etc. It answers all the questions. It's like, the plan is like the architect's plan. You look at a building, right? So what you're going to do is you're not going to go into the building and check it out. It's too extensive. But what happens if you look at the architect's diagrams? Everything in that building must be in that plan. So there's the concept of the plan, which is really the study of Hashkafa. It's a huge area. And the Ramchal wrote extensively on that. Okay? The second area of Judaism is called the mechanism. The mechanism. The mechanism is really the study of Kabbalah. Because that's really what Kabbalah is. Kabbalah is a description of a dimension of reality that serves as uh, it's an added dimension of reality. Kabbalah. It's a study of the spiritual universes. You know, 
And that's a mechanism of how we do our job. It's the machine, like you use a car to drive, to transport. Kabbalah is the machine that is used fundamentally to bring down an ore. That's what it's all about. So if, if plan is blueprint of a building, yeah, what's the Kabbalah mechanism? is nothing more than a study of an upper dimension that serves as a, as a device that enables an ore, which is really a, 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 an ore is some aspect <coughs> of the presence of the Bersham, to come down into the Bria. What do you mean? For change reality. What do you mean an ore? An ore, uh, an ore really is the presence of God. Mm-hmm. Some Ashpur. Asp- Ash- well, it's also Ashpur also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the essence of Kabbalah really it's a limit of another dimension, the spiritual dimensions, okay, that <clears throat> allows an ore, which is the presence of God, to go from up to down, thereby changing realities. Zikuch. It's the whole concept of Kabbalah, really. And all the, the mechanism, the components, the interactions, the dynamics, everything of the spiritual universe is the study of Kabbalah. But fundamentally, it's a dimension that allows the presence of God, which is above the mechanism, to filter down into this world, change this reality from a physical into a spiritual. And that spiritual reality, which is, by the way, called Oilam Habo, remains forever. That's what Kabbalah really is. It's a very short, brief, concise definition of what it's all about. But that's called the study of the mechanism. <coughs> Third is the study of the instrument. How do you do it? instrument. How do you do this? How do you bring down an ore, the Milo, all the way down here? How do you do that? The Hal- instruments. Is it halacha? Oh, the, the, and the instrument itself has subdivisions. How many instruments are there, really? It's interesting. Well, I'm trying to you see, it's an interesting way of looking at Judaism as a totality. And the last area, okay, so we have a plan, we have a mechanism which is really, the plan is a study of Hashkafa. The mechanism is a study of Kabbalah in all its uh, dimensions and so on, right? The third area is called the instrument. How do you do it? How do you bring down that ore into the physical universe? How do you do it? What's it in? An instrument is a device. It's a tool that I can accomplish something with. So the question is, what is the instrument? Mitzvahs. Oh. That's it's, it's far more than that, but we're good. But you begin to see a mitzvah is an instrument that does this, <coughs> okay? And by the way, the, the the name of the the name that is given to this task of bringing all down into the bria is called tikkun. That's what it's called to correct or rectify creation. And the last area is called the progression. It's the history of mankind from Adam Rishon all the way to Mashiach. How the Jews did the Tikkun. It's a progression. It's the actually historical attempt. It's man's attempt or the Jews' attempt to do the Tikkun. And that's a study of history. Really, that's really the study of history. You see? So we have four areas of Judaism the plan, the mechanism. That's the whole thing? That's it. It's amazing. So we're in Tikkun. The plan, the mechanism, the instruments, <clears throat> but each one has a subdivision, right? And you have the uh, progression. The actual attempt at tikkun, that's the, that's the whole chumash, the obvious, the shvatim, that's really all it is. is all the of most them most are trying to do the tikkun. Each one has its own area, it's, you know, the whole setup and so on. But anyway, that's, that's, those are the four areas of the entire Judaism. So Torah is an instrument. Who? Terra now, is an instrument. so let's subdivide, now let's go subcategory, the instrument. Forget the other ones, Okay. I just want to show you, <clears throat> if you know this, you have a handle on all Judaism. You know, and you know, not more important, you know what has to be taught ultimately, or what you guys have to learn if you want to be a sholay, you know. How, what are the instruments of tikkun? The tikkun devices, that's what they're called. Torah. Oh, so there's limana Torah is one. Mitzvah. Asiyas and mitzvah is two. What else? Midas. Tikkun Hamidas. Tikkun Hamidas is three. You see how they all fit? It's all part of the instrument. What else is there? Olum Chesed Yibone. Is that a meter? No. No, Olum Chesed Yibone is the plan. Chesed. Well, that's the plan. It's part of the plan. 
it's the meaning of what the, the Bria looks in the way it does because it's yes. a product of chesed. Yes. 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 Who? He's saying to do chesed, but that's one so, of the... But, well, I'm asking, is, I talk about the plan or the instrument, which is it? To do chesed? Or the world is shaped, is configured in a way that allows chesed to be done? See, which is it? You're either talking about the plan or the instrument. What, what about Philo? Oh, very good. Tefillah, it's four. Actually, it's five. There's a fourth that I would put before Tefillah. What do we got so far? Limana Torah, Asilis and Mitzvahs, Tikkun Hamidus, three. Number four, I call it the Mesilas Avoido, the Avoido itself. Musa? Which is, well, Musa is a combination. Musa is the Limud of what? Of how to correctly perform. Tikkun Hamidus and Avoida. I use the word Mesila because the Ramchal's Mesila Sicham. That's the classic Avoida. Mesila Sicham is not about Midas. I mean, it has Midas in it. But what it really is, is the blueprint, a ladder of the Avoida itself. Kedusha, Tara, <clears throat> Precious. Precious is not a Mida, really. It's a, it's a level of Avoida, you see. That's the beauty of the Mesila Sicham. I'm sure the different Ochas, friend the Ochas Sadikim is a safer <clears throat> basic than what? Amidus. Amidus. But the, the Messiah Shishom is not about Midas. You see, what is it about? The Avoida itself. Interesting. Anyway, so you have, so what do we have? Four, and then Tefillah is so great that it has its own five. Anybody pick at six? Number one. No, no, I remember. <laughs> I would never guess it. Nevoa. Nevoa. The Nevoa itself is an incredible instrument. Okay, oh, six. There you are. You did it. Yeah, what? Nuvua, he, what? What's the sixth? Nuvua. Oh, yeah, yeah. The whole tikkun through, that happens through being a novi. It's, it's a whole tikkun. That, it we produce, don't have that anymore. Does it produce tikkun or it's a result with tikkun already? Does it produce more tikkun? Well, it produces tikkun, yeah. When you are misdabic to shamus and so on. It's, it's all about, it's the, it's, it, <coughs> Nuvua, at least I would use the word Nuvua because it includes the whole concept of Yehudim. Yehudim, Kavanot, as they say in Tzvad. Kavanot. Mechavu <coughs> Shemus. When they daven. You ever see a Tzvad, a city, a Sikuk? Or Rishash. You ever see the city of the Rishash? Yeah. <coughs> That's called Kavanas Yehudim. I, I, I put it under Nevo because a Novi uses all that. But that's really what it is. So now we're in Limonat Terra now. So oh, so now, you see where we are? So we have the totality, the four fa- areas of Judaism. The six instruments, and now we go to Limanat Torah. And then we see exactly where we are. I've, we're now in Limanat Torah. See, now, on the Limanat Torah, how do we learn? So, language, thinking, logic, and ontology, and argumentation. And number three is method. What is method? Method is the application of the thinking into the Torah itself, to apply it to the Torah. You can think about anything, you know, politics, economics, physics. No, you don't want to do that, right? We want to apply the beauty of thinking, which is logic, ontology, and argumentation. We want to apply to the Torah itself and be successful. So method is number three. And together, right after method, is called memory. We need to develop a system that will allow us to memorize, to recall or to retrieve information. Nice plan. Can you imagine? <clears throat> this is what's called the ideal. It's really what it is. It's an ideal. Uh, you, you, your guy does this because he uh, becomes a shalem. Okay. Now... I can go further into what kind of a curriculum do we need to have, you know, a curriculum, and then go, go on to the, the checklist of each of the curriculums, you know. That's not for 10 do gulim. Who? That's not for 10 do gulim. Who? <laughs> not, not for 10, 10 do gulim, gulim. It's, it's huge. You know, you walk into a store, <clears throat> how many times says, we don't charge tax, we just collect it. I didn't make this. <laughs> you know, look at me, I, 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 I you know, just to organize this through time, you know, just to, because Yiddishkeit is vast, and there's so many things coming at you, you know what I'm saying? 
You need to say, okay, wait, 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 what's coming at me? Where does it belong? So what I've done is I sat down and I've created 10 structures of which I'm telling you several. First, the question is, before Judaism, could, would you be able to give the same concept in Shia? Say that again? Without Judaism. Before Without Mat- Judaism? Before Mat- could, would you be able to give the same, the same, the same structure in Shia? You mean, does it, did it exist before Mat- Is that yeah. what you're asking? Yeah. You don't mean if I can give it. Did it exist? Did it exist, the whole structure? Of course. Would you be able to give the... Yes. Yeah? Yeah, Odom Rishon. <clears throat> He's the first man. Not the first Jew, first man. Right? Odom Rishon was part of the plan. Right? Odom Rishon was part of the plan, except there was only one guy and his wife, and that was it. But there's a, the, the Rosh created the entire Bria for that one man. So the whole plan existed just for him. Right? That's number one. Then there was the Kabbalah. He had to tap into the Ruchnius, even though he was Ruchnius, but there was much more Ruchnius than him that he had to use as a mechanism to bring down the ore, right? So he could change. He can go from Olam Yitzira, as they say, to Olam Bri and so on. He had to use that mechanism. So that's true, too. Number three, right? The instrument. What was his instrument? Mitzvah. Who? Nature. One mitzvah, I see some mitzvahs. He had one mitzvah. Basically, even though Mitzvah said he had seven, but when he won, don't eat from that tree. That, the entire Bria needed only one mitzvah to do the tikkun. Ramchal says. He had spillah. Who? He had spillah. He didn't need it. Just don't eat from the tree. That's all he had to do. No, the Oedah, the Oedah, the Oedah, Well, I'm sure during that day, you know, a couple of hours, you know, but basically it was just a mitzvah sloisah <coughs> saying, don't eat from that tree. And that the entire tikkun of the Bria lay in that one mitzvah. Just Why? <laughs> because the tikkun of the Bria is like a shovel. If I want to build a house, right? I need to build, I need to dig a, a whole foundation. So what am I going to bring? A little toy shovel? No. You bring a huge derrick. Right? So the tikkun depends on the hester. How much hester, how aura of the ore is there? That's how much tikkun you need. In the time of Adam Rishon, there was an enormous amount of how aura. How aura means ore. So what do they need to do? There's not much test going on, right? So all you need was one mitzvah to remove that hester. You could just go to sleep. What? You could just go to sleep. You could have just gone to sleep. Because <laughs> Lois Asi means you don't do anything, you see? Unbelievable. But you notice, uh, so therefore, the device, the ticking device, the instrument changes as the hester grows. Notice. I don't know if you realize yeah, that. It's not it's simple what he's saying. What? It's not simple what he's saying. Well, what, you could what? just go to sleep. You know, because That's others, the others learned the that there was a mitzvah sasei also. We call it a gam teichel, as an assay. So it's not just going to sleep and not <laughs> doing it. <laughs> this world is made for doing, not for not doing. If you're not doing, you don't have to be here. In any case, um, yeah, so I, it's certainly by, by other, you know. It's just the instrument varied. You know what I'm saying? And, but, but Adam was what? He was the first progression <coughs> in the history of the teaching <coughs> process the progression of man's attempt to be in Sakh and the Bria he was the first guy or a digression who? or a digression or a digression or a digression yeah. right you see so everything I just said applies to other mission interesting Koyed Machet Koyed Machet yeah, but on a sure. higher level though yeah I mean he was a different person the Ha'ora was different he was different, so therefore his tikkun was different. Uh, he didn't need it exactly, but as the Gawa, uh, as the Hester gets worse, you need more and more tikkunim, more instruments. So you'll notice it went from one. You went from one mitzvah to seven, then from seven to Taryag without Sivoy, then you have Taryag with Sivoy, then you had all the Drabonans, and then you have, look, you know you what's going on? How terror is increasing? Why? Because the Hester is increasing. Now you have war, what? Forget about it, we're born and what do you have? You have Minogam. You see, look, look, you know, mm. you, uh, if you ask yourself, what was the Shulchan Aruch of Adam Rishon? You know? I, it probably was incredible. You know, what? Up until you get to know strawberries and grapes. You know? I don't know if Dirish would have had, I don't know if Dirish would have had anything going by Adam Rishon. You know, anybody could have memorized the whole thing, you know? Although there was incredible Chochmah, don't get me wrong. The Bosham, Adam Rishon knew everything that was, what he knew was phenomenal. The Bosham showed him everything, you know. He saw that all, you know, he, he could see from one end of the world to the other. His knowledge were, must have been unbelievable and so on, you know. 
but basically, uh, is uh, automation fit the picture? So method and memory is part of is different skills. So method, and, I and call thinking. it number three. I'm now I'm going through the curriculum. In, in order to achieve these three, in order to achieve the instruments, I'm now in the third structure called the curriculum. No, but is that? I'm sorry. The method, which is the curriculum we're going to go right now into. Is this method is the application of, of thinking and of logic, ontology, and argumentation to tailor itself. So it's all under thinking. It's all under the structure of thinking. Or well, that, I, I separate method because that's what the Ramchal ultimately did. <coughs> See what the, what the Ramchal <coughs> did, which is interesting. He wrote a book on logic. That's that's logic. But then what he did, he wrote a book on Derek Hashem, uh, Derek Tunis, and the Hagdama to Derek Hashem. So he applied the logic. And the argumentation, which is there, all that stuff, he applied it to the Torah, the Gemara. That's what he did. That's called method. I call it method. It's on the thinking. Yeah. You see, but but you need generically to know how to think. Yes. And then you can apply it to Torah. Yeah. That Torah means what? Tanakh. And we, that's why we're going through the curriculum. <laughs> oh, sorry, you have such a hard time, you know. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to tell you something, it's being uh, recorded. So you have a, um, you know, the problem is to get it, you need to go on YouTube, which is awesome. <laughs> but uh, I can't see what to do. Anyway, uh, anyway, so everybody got that? Look, we're, we're having an entire, what's called a <coughs> super scope view of Yiddishkeit. <laughs> the four areas, the elaboration of the instrument. Now we go down the elaboration of the curriculum based on that. And this is just Lima Natera. Forget about Tikkun and all that. That's, a, that's all, you know, you know, I'm so on. But I, I just want to show you, appreciate the fullness of what there is to know and how to, how to do it and so on, you know. So you'd have, you'd have those three, which is the precursors. Those are the skills, right? You have the skills, which is called the language, the thinking, which is logic, ontology, argumentation, and number three is method and memory system. You need a memory system. If you don't have a memory system, it's not going to go anywhere. And I don't mean there are different ways. Some are advisable, some are poor. They're, they're secondaries, you know. <coughs> and so on, you know. <coughs> the principle of memory, you know what that is? What's the principle of memory? I once told somebody, speaking to a Rebbe, you know, so I was telling him certain ideas of memory and so on. So I was like, give you an example, Rav Moshe Feinstein. Rav Moshe didn't remember a thing. He looked at me, he said, excuse me, what? I said, Rav Moshe didn't remember anything. Yeah, you know. He, you know it's just, that's not a shocking statement. You know? He just learned it. What? Yeah, I just learned it. <clears throat> he never <clears throat> forgot it. That's the difference. There's a difference when you learn and you forget, then you have to retrieve and recall. That's a real avoider. But what happens if you know how to do a memory system where you never forget? Do you know how rapid that is? You go through shots in one day. Yeah, if I asked you, count from one to ten, right? When was the last time you counted from one to ten, right? But how fast can you do it? One, two, three, four, five, ten. That was probably like one quarter of a second. But I haven't thought about that in years. Why? Because I never forgot it. That which you never forget, the ability to recall that with incredible speed is unbelievable. Is it due to level of clarity? What? Is it due to level of clarity? Actually, it's not so much. It's clarity, yes. Yeah, well, I don't want to get to the whole memory system, but that's, what, that's, you need, that's the principle. You want to aspire to that. You do that, it's just believe. That's how the rugged of a Kinchaza they say when he went to get Yen Ali, he has a half shot going up and a half shot going back. After the Ali, you know? He was, we look, it's impossible. It's not impossible at all. It's just, you know, if, because if you, if you know something with such mastery, you know, okay, they did it in a certain way, which you have to define and so on and so forth. But I just want to tell you that part of the method is the concept of a memory system. The principle of which is don't forget it. The question is, how do you do that? I don't even get into that, but anyway. <clears throat> That's a, uh, you know, and the, the, this memory system not used by anybody except Gedolim. And they have their own unique way and so on, you know. 
But it's a, it's a pity. If guys, if guys knew how to do it, they have guys walking around knowing it's incredible what they remember and so on, you know? But anyway, Man. and then you have the curriculum. You have Tanakh as one. You know what I'm saying? Tanakh. What's the important things to learn in Tanakh? Who? 24 books. That's how many there are. But what do you want to... Well, forget Nach. In the 24 books. No, I want to tell you something very interesting. <clears throat> very interesting if you learn Tanakh, you know. Put Nach aside for a minute. What are the four things you need to learn in Tanakh, in Torah? The four things that Torah consists of, fundamentally. Story? Other than language. I'm not talking about languages, you know. The story. What a story oh. the mitzvahs. Oh, the stories, the narratives. Home stories, narratives. Mitzvahs. Mitzvahs, Tayag Mitzvah. Well, you know this because I. Right? Of course. Well, the stories aren't said to themselves, they're really said to the Ashkaf No, no, wait, wait. So you need to, no, no, you need to know the stories. You need to know the chronologies. What, you need to know the events. What happened? They're simple events, you know, whatever they are. The second thing you want to know about the events is what? What's critical? You want to know, because remember, the others and all the people of the, of the Torah, they illustrate what? Midas. And the third thing they illustrate is Avoida. That's what we, most people use Tanakh, oh, besides the narrative, what, what do you see as, what is the avoid of these people? And what's the Midas of these people? You see. That's what most people do, right? And then the fourth thing is the, Asir, is the Mitzvah itself, the Tariyad. So that's the four? Tariyad? No, well, you have the narrative, the event itself. You have the, the illustration of the Avoida, the Midas, and the Tariyad. There is a fifth that you that uh, to you is very important. The fifth is the Hashkofa. Why did this happen? Why why are these events happening? Or what what, what was the concept? Where do you what's the taken progression in the Chumash? You know, Avraham Avinu did something, Akeda. What did he do? I mean, he did the Akeda. We know the event. You know, and we see the Midas, you know, he was Kovish, even though he was Chesed, he was Kovish Gvura, right? There's all kinds of things coming out. You know what the avoid, you learn avoid from the others. You learn, you know, uh, Chesed, you know, and so on, right? You learn Midas from the others. And you see the event, right? But there's something else, the fourth component, the Tikkun. Why was there a Kakeda? What did it do to the Bria when Avram Avinu passed? That's the Tikkun. You see, so the, really, and then there's Yasir, the the mitzvah itself. Those are five things that you learn when you learn Chumash successfully. Okay, I, mean, I don't know who does that, but those are the five content areas that you want to learn in Tanakh. You know, most people focus on what, on the midas and the avoda. To a certain extent, the event. Story. What the story? Yeah. But very little is done on the Ashkofa. Forget about the Ashkofa, right? But there's something interesting. Let me give you an incredible idea. Okay? You want to learn Torah. So besides these four, there's a Tariyag Mitzvah. Imagine if you knew the Tariyag Mitzvah by heart. Let's assume you went 613 Mitzvahs. You knew them. You memorized them. Right? And something about them, like the Sefer Chinuch. There's some very good sfarim on the mitzvahs. What happens if you remember them? With so, you know, what you what you do is you create a checklist of categories: who is obligated, when, who is not obligated, when is it, when is it applied, where does it apply? You know what you made a checklist of categories, and that will apply to all the mitzvahs. You have you you would know. It's interesting. You would have an incredible shlita on the kolatera kula just from that. It's interesting. But you wouldn't do it chronologically like the Chinuch does. You do it conceptually, organizationally, like the Rambam. Like, all, like for instance, in Hilchus Pesach. So Rambam is Moino, all the, all the mitzvahs of Pesach. You know, Tajbisum, Bilbao, because you want to do it conceptually. Because chronologically, they're out of order and so on, you know? But, you know, I once did that. Many years ago, somebody put me up to that. He said, give me a sheet of mitzvahs. If I memorize all the mitzvahs. This happened a long time. You know who it was? Noach Weinberg, Rav Noach Weinberg. Famous Rav Noach Weinberg. 
I used to learn in the same yeshiva. He was there also. It's a long time ago, you know. So he was big into this. So he says, "Listen, memorize the Tarek Mitzvahs with the, with the exact lushing of the Rambam." Wasn't that completely? You know, I said I had to say the lush. You know, the heading, the heading. I mean, well, the lush and the Rambam. You know, you know, like uh, the first one, Ladas Hashem. You know, you know, you know, Shaloi. You know, whatever the lush and the Rambam. Remember, it's all Tarek Mitzvahs. You know, you know, I thought it was an interesting idea. I thought it was cute. You know, you know. So it took me a whatever, whatever it took me a two weeks, three weeks, and I had it down, and they, I got it for free, and I still have the sheet to McBetches as a gift that he gave me, Rabbi Weinberg. Interesting, but with something else, the real payoff of this, I realized. I said, "Wow, I know Kala <laughs> Think about that. You know, you know, you know that. I, I'm not, of course, I ended up being and all that, but." But I knew everything that God commanded the Jews. Hey, how you doing? What a heck of... I want to tell you something. Don't, don't minimize this. I realized he was right. The greatest way, the simplest way of having a heck of, of kola terukula is memorize the mitzvahs with the order of the Rambam. Kala You can't ask for more, right? You know, it, we, it's a word, it's a, you know, let the fourth grader do it. What fourth grader, you know? It's a gewaldiger way. Why do I say that? Because it's the quickest way to see the totality of what I call the oral law. You see, every tzivu the Rebbe ever did. You know, chattas and oshem and tzoraz and mamash. And you can rattle it off because if you do it like the Rambam, you see it in the order of the Rambam, you know? Because he, he combines, which is gewaldi. So if you're learning Pesach, you see every mitzvah asay and loisa asay in Pesach. So it gives you the complete heck of, of Pesach. It's the mitzvahs. It's worth it. Let me tell you something. It's really worth it. But it's a simple idea. How many guys do it? Handful. Handful, yeah. But it's a simple idea. It's the fastest and quickest way, quickest way to get a handle on Kola Terukula. Now, so you have Tanakh, and I told you what to learn in Tanakh. You have the, right? you have the narrative, you have the five things that you need to learn in Nach. Right. That's part of the curriculum, right? Right. Right? The narrative, the Midas, the Avoida, uh, the Tariag, and the Hashkofa, which is the Tikkun process, which is, you know, that's really, right? And so, okay. Um, great. So what do we got? We have the, uh, well, logic and so on, right? right? And then we have the Tanakh, right? Same idea, right? Then we got, what's next? Mishnais. Oh, uh, yeah. see, now what's Mishnais? Uh, Mishnais is nothing more than a database, which is an elaboration of the Tariq Mitzvahs. It's really what it is. So imagine if you know the Tariq Mitzvahs, and now you go what? More detailed. Mishnais is simply... The detail, mitzat ter of all the Tariq mitzvahs you just learned. You see the progression, the logical progression. And then what's next? They have the Mishnahis. Gemara. Gemara. What is Gemara? This way. Explanation of the Mishnah. Of the Mishnah. Explanation of the Mishnah. This is a talent. Discourse. Discourse, not really. What is Gemara? The problem solving for us. Exactly. That's it. What Gemara is, is a text that deals with the advanced problems of Toshiba Pen. It does it in a problem solving format. Sugya. Right? <clears throat> Gemara is nothing more than a text that has Mahamorim and, su- and Sugyas. Remember the definition of a Sugya? So is the total treatment that is given over toward the resolution of a problem. It's called a central problem, right? Now you see where Gemara fits. Gemara deals with problems, whether the problem be Iboilu, Reminhu, Mantano, Minohanimili, you know, or, or, or you know, or the Chasuri Mikhasra. Those are problems. And the Gemara is nothing more than a text that deals with those problems. So as such, it is what? It's advanced. <coughs> That's why you see Gemara really is after Mikra, Mishnah, and then Gemara. Because that's really, it's an advanced treatment. Great. And then after Gemara, what do we learn? Shukhanah. That's the application. 
And that's it. The rest of the Torah, you know. But those are the fundamental areas of Torah. And I've just given you the real proper sequence of that. Great. If you guys ever open yeshiva, this is the right way to do it. You leaving? I have to go, yeah. Okay. I have what, time, what, time are we, what time are we finishing? Are we finishing from Marav downstairs at 9.50? What is Marav? 9.50. 9.50? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know. I never got into the Mishnah. I wanted, now I'm, now I'm ready to no, 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 no. the checklist of the Mishnah. Right. I, I thought this would be very valuable. Gives you a handle on the, the whole Yiddish guy, you know? Okay. Uh, so we are now into what? So what are we getting again? Mishnah now, yeah. When, when are we getting together again? Wednesday? Wednesday night in the session. Okay. 8.30, yeah. Okay, Mishnah. And we get into the, uh, the uh, Masechet itself, you know? So now we're in Mishnah. Now we're in Mishnah. Well, actually we're in Masechta. The three checklists of learning how to, how to learn Mishnah. Yes. The yes. first is Masechta. Yeah. Right. What are the eight items of Masechta? One. What's the title? Two. What's the Seder? Three. What's the number of the, in the Seder? The order number? Four. How many Mishnah are in the Masechta? Totality. Five. How many Prakam? Six. What's the distribution? Means what's the distribution of Mishnahis to the Prokham? Seven. What's the central idea of the entire Masechta? That organizes the entire Masechta. Eight. What's the area of that central idea? Synthesis. Where does it fit? vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the Masechtas of that Seder. And number nine, what are the different dimensions of that particular central idea? Which we're going to do for Shabbos. What are the dimensions are there that the whole Masechta will deal with? That These nine ideas give us a handle on the entire Masechta. What's the last nine one? Ninth one dimensions the is the dimensions of the central idea. What's that? Well, we'll see. Subcategories. Subcategory of, of the central idea. <clears throat> Great. That's the That's checklist That's for the Masechta. Was that? Could, could we just get a quick re review? Title. Sure. A what? Number one. What I just said? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of this is elementary, but it's a complete checklist. Some is elementary, some is not. One, the title. Masechet Shabbos. <clears throat> okay? The order. Mo'ed. The number. Number one. The totality of Mishnayas. How many prokhas? Yeah, it's interesting. 24. What is the distribution of Mishnayas to each parent? Which is it's, very interesting in Shabbos. Because of course. Many, many prokhas are very short. Yes. <laughs> you know, Bamed Toymen is too Mishnayas, you know. But anyway, sure. Boy, that's six ideas, right? Then we have 7, 8, 9, which is, what is the central idea of the Masechta, which is very important, because that unites the whole Masechta. Exactly. Well, sometimes it's easy. If I told you Yavamas, what would you say then? You could tell me Yavama, right? But that's not true. That's not the central idea. Who? Variations on Yisraelva. Variations on yes. Or deviations of Yisraelva. Exactly, you know. And, and so on. That's why you have Asia Sish in the Bombas. Because it's the deviation from Asia Sish. And so on, right? You know. uh, anyway, so you have the central idea, you have the dimensions, um, central idea, or the area. The area of the central area. And then the right. dimensions. In Shabbos, you have many dimensions going on. Now, the area of that central idea is going to be, going to be the same. <coughs> What's that? Be, the area of that central idea is going to be the same as the Seder, always, as the same mode. The area of the central idea. The it may, thing. it may, yeah. It may. It may or may not. It has to. What well, again, Mr. Pelagi says more than one central idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yavamis has a couple of problems yeah. in the middle that just talk about. Tell, what does it talk about? Truma. Truma? Yeah, and okay. Truma is your Kuna. Who? Truma and then. And, 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 Iguna. Oh. Yeah, but Iguna is really part of the theme. Not Iguna, Truma. 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 Yeah. How much does that uh, does it talk about truma? In the the 
I'm on the king of 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 the king you know, it's like the, like the mirror system. Some of the, some of the ideas are agavs. Agavs. You know, I mean, and that's really where they are. I mean, I would, would, would we put, uh, probably not, but, you know, that's what they're... <laughs> but still, still there's a central idea, basically, of the time of Sechta. So those nine ideas mm-hmm. is the ideas of the Masechta. Good. Now, Mishnah. They're actually down oh, to the Mishnah. Mishnah checklist. Mishnah checklist. Mishnah checklist. Again, you got six ideas. One. Central idea. What's a central idea? Every Mishnah has a central idea. People don't realize that. And that's key to memory and clarity. You need to locate or identify what is a central idea of the Mishnah. Every Mishnah has a central idea, and that's why you have all the halachas around that central idea. <coughs> you see? You need to try to correct, identify the central idea. That's a very important organizing principle. What's that? Can you have a mission with two central ideas? Yes or no? Meaning, could there be an idea at the end that doesn't belong? Agav Grora. Probably. Because Agav Grora is so... It's such an important uh, mainstay, you know. But I want to tell you something. Even if it's Agav Grora, I still would try to connect it. Okay. okay. Just for memory's sake. Thanks. Even if I would never put it there. You know. mm-hmm. So you have central idea. What's number two in the Mishnah? Area. Oh, very good. So I'm really good. This, huh? well, that's how you do it. Yeah, check this. Composition. I Meaning it's always the same, com- same idea. Is the area. What is the area? Wait. Okay, central idea is an idea. Is it an analysis or synthesis? Analysis. No. It's generalization. It's a generic. It's, who said it? No, 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 The guy who left. <laughs> no, of course you have to look in each halacha. It's true. You need, need the commonality. So the commonality is synthesis, because you want to connect. Now, what's the area of the central idea that's even more synthesis, <clears throat> which well, leads every, us to a, everything is, is relative, relatively synthesis or analysis. Well, it's no, it's yeah, but what's the third idea? Would you have there? How many statements? How many statements? Halachos. No, there's one I put in before that, hmm. and this is what kills everybody. Preliminary information. Yes. It's called the background information. Every Mishnah has a background. The problem is the Mishnah doesn't tell you. You see, what you need to realize is the Rebbe selected halachas, but he didn't bother many times to give you the background. So it's not the first halacha, it could be the eighth halacha, and you're missing seven. I once showed you Vomus. Remember, I once showed you the Vomus? How the Chamesh Esvenosh and Paitus Sam and so on and so forth is the seventh idea from the beginning. So Rebbe left out in a certain sense seven, six ideas and then he just jumped into the seventh. We'll see that as we go on, you know. But every Mishnah has a background. It has what's called a preliminary information that you need to know or you want to call it its infrastructure. And then you look in the Mishnah and the Mishnah takes off from that. And a great deal of Clarity is achieved when you have the infrastructure. If you don't, you're mixed up. You never re- it's a fragment. You never really get it. See, that's why, by the way, Kahati, that's when Kahati wrote his Mishnah in the, in the 50s. Of you got it, exactly. He recognized the problems, you know, and one of them was background. In fact, one of the most the reason why Mishnah was so difficult before him is nobody presented the background information. And he did. That, I think that's one of the reasons why his Mishnahs took off. Art School Zichr does that. They all do that now. But Kahati was the pioneer. Background. Because the Mishnah really is an intermediate step. Not advanced. Gemara is the advanced. But Mishnah is the intermediate. You need the infrastructure. That's okay. So what do we have? We have a central, central idea. Area we have what? The area of that central idea. Those are synthesis. Then we have the background information which to a certain extent is synthesis, but much more uh, immediate to the uh, central idea. Then we have the, state, the number of statements. Count them. How many a statement could be a halacha or could be just, so he answers him. It's a statement. You see, you want to delineate the number and that's how you remember. That's for memory purposes, you see, which we will do.
Yeah, when are we going to get to the like application? The, next week, uh, this, Monday. this Monday. That's why I want to get through this, you know? Should we have to do this? Ah, okay. Well, I have to. Mm. Well, but yeah. I already have the uh, the rest of the chickens. Yeah. The Mishnah and Halacha chickens. Okay. What should I do? Continue? Or, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, 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 it, we, I mean, it's mostly repeat from last time. So we see. Yeah. Okay. So you have a central idea, you have its area, you have its background information or preliminary information. You have, the, that's number three. The four is how many statements are there? Number five. What are the statements? Give me each Halacha. Just delineate them, you know, one, two, three, four, and so on, right? That's number five. And number six is what's called a memory aid. You need to take a word, two words, and designate that so you remember the central idea. Because that's how you're going to memorize the Mishnahis, by the central idea. So you need a word or two or three that refers to the central idea, and that's it. We're going to do the what? We're going to do that too. We're going to do that. Yeah, Wednesday was really when we get into it. I just want to tell you all the the map, the structure and so on, you know. <coughs> did you go through the six parts of the halacha? No. Halacha? I already did that with some of these guys, but I'll do it again rapidly Wednesday, that there are eight different things in any given halacha that you want to know. There's eight. How many do you know? Seven. Six, six, seven. If you're addressing areas too, then it's seven. Address area and variational conditions. No, it's eight. Well, I case and conduct, I divide. Case, conduct, um, case, reason, conduct, reason, what? Um, the reason principle. why? Principle. Prin- the principle, variations. Essential conditions. No, not variations. Conditions, variations, I count as one, okay. Uh, conditions, essential variations, conditions, like if you, if you derivation, the area, structure, yeah. variational conditions. This applies eight. to every mission individual. Every halacha. Every what I just said now? Yeah. Every halach and shas. Every halach and shas. That's the checklist. Yeah. Could, could you repeat again? Which is very important. What? Could, could you please repeat again? Case, conduct, principle, essential conditions of the case. Derivation. And that itself has subdivisions. Area or category. It's the variation. No, yeah. I do that at the end. The area and c- or category. Change. Structure, or the address or the location of the structure. And the variations of conditions. Because that's comparison. What comes after area? Area comes um, a location or address in the structure, which is much greater than an area. And then you have the variation conditions. Variations of conditions. When you give this... Because sh- sh- you actually see the different cases. And you see the flow, the dynamic. What, what, what happens if you alter this condition? What happens to the halacha? Yeah. It's a complete roadmap. What I was just given is a complete roadmap to open a yeshiva. Think about that. Could have one franchise. Who? Fran- franchise, huh? Anybody? Coke. <coughs> Some coke? No, thank you. Some coke? Coke? Okay. That's the one thing we have in common. So far. <laughs> Great. So, so Wednesday on. we begin again, we really get into Shabbos. But that means we have to come prepared with the parrot. Well, you gotta know them exactly. You have to know them Shnais. Yes. No, yes. no. I mean we're not gonna cover them. We know. But I, I like I told the guys, I will go as fast as you guys. You know, if you know the whole, we'll, you know, for all, for all I care, we do five Mishnahs in one shot. It doesn't make a difference, but you have to know the Mishnahs. Because I am not going to say the Mishnah. Meaning, it's not a Mishnah the, the, the number of details. It's a critique Shia. It's a skill building Shia. But we have to come in knowing the number of Dinim, have made a Mananic for Mishnah, it. Know the Mishnah. Know the Mishnah. No, but now we know this haste knowing is not what <laughs> Knowing as far as you would know before this type of shit is given. Okay. Well, no, we'll, we'll, look, listen, I, you know, I, I want to tell you something. I'll vie, you know, the case, conduct, and principle. I'll case, vie. Case, conduct, principle. That I feel pretty confident I can handle. Murdered. Till they start taking me apart, Tony. So, Wednesday at 8.30. Wednesday at 8.30. That's the first three lines. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, also the central idea of a mission is very critical.
very clear. But isn't isn't this? I mean, for memory's sake, isn't all this overkill? I mean, to remember all these, you have you have nine things for each mission. I mean, you don't have to do all nine. You just there's certain of these nine. Really, only four or five. Are critical. Wait, so, so just doing all nine just, just makes it just overkill. Just well, just it, it, I, what I did, I, I gave the ideal. Right. Okay. You have to do it. Of course, look, there's stuff you're going to leave out because you don't know the answer because the information is missing. But this is the ideal. And then you'll aim whatever you can. But it's a totality of what you need to know. Yeah. And it's also, you know what I'm saying? If you, once you make the halakhic structure and you may have you know, the area in the whole map, you're really you're, you're, you're rearranging the masechah. Yes. And, but then if you want to memorize the Mishnayas in the order of Rebbe... Oh, you, you want to link it. But, link but there's it. There's like two totally different memories, things you have to memorize. And then, and then but I want to tell you something. You do not want to remember Mishnayas as a fragment. You want to remember it as a framework. So you go... It's true. You will be rearranging the Halachas. But then the Rambam does that too. Right, so does the Shulchan Aruch. To, to, to put a stress on a, a particular word in order this Mishnah. When this Mishnah has one halacha on that part of the map, and the, the second statement is, has to do with that But one. it's not hard. Once you have a framework and you see the totality, it's not hard to link. It's really not that hard. Because what you're going to really link is the central idea. And once you link the central idea, you link all the halachas, basically. Yeah, okay. I never, I never but then you see the flow. What was that? Thank you very much. Yeah. I was there with you. I had to wait till my brother came. Then I yeah. took his car. Okay. I wish you could. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, I'm not. You. I had to solve that problem somehow.